from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. I am Father Francis Salesiar. The televising of this Mass is made possible by the contribution from an anonymous donor from Vancouver, British Columbia. This Mass is offered in thanksgiving for blessings received, for strong faith, and for peace in the world. Our sincere thanks to our donor for the gift of this Mass to the faithful across Canada, the United States, and around the world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. As we come to celebrate this Eucharist, once again Jesus invites us and the disciples to a higher standard of life, to a new way of life. But we all know the invitation that comes from God is very hard. So let's ask God's pardon and mercy for the moments where we have failed to appreciate the call, where we failed to practice the invitation that comes from God. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Maria Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. The word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite, saying, Go down to meet King Ahab of Israel, who rules in Samaria. He is now in the vineyard of Naboth, where he has gone to take possession. You shall say to him, Thus says the Lord, Have you killed and also taken possession? You shall say to him, Thus says the Lord, In the place where dogs licked up the blood of Naboth, dogs will also lick up your blood. Ahab said to Elijah, Have you found me, O my enemy? He answered, I have found you, because you have sold yourself to do what is evil in the sight of the Lord. I will bring disaster on you. I will consume you, and will cut off from Ahab every male, bond or free, in Israel. And I will make your house like the house of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, and like the house of Baasha, son of Ahijah, because you have provoked me to anger and have caused Israel to sin. Also concerning Jezebel, the Lord said, The dogs shall eat Jezebel within the bounds of Jezreel. Anyone belonging to Ahab who dies in the city, the dogs shall eat. And any one of his who dies in the open country, the birds of the air shall eat. Indeed, there was no one like Ahab who sold himself to do what was evil in the sight of the Lord, urged on by his wife Jezebel. He acted most abominably in going after idols as the Amorites had done, whom the Lord drove out before the Israelites. When Ahab heard those words, he tore his clothes and put sackcloth over his bare flesh. He fasted, lay in the sackcloth, and went about dejectedly. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite. Have you seen how Ahab have humbled himself before me? Because he has humbled himself before me, I will not bring the disaster in his days. But in his son's days, I will bring the disaster on his house. The word of the Lord. 
mercy blot out my transgressions wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin be merciful O Lord for we For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. Be merciful, O Lord, for we Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. I give you a new commandment, love one another as I have loved. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be children of your heavenly Father in heaven. For he makes his son rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. We continue to hear Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. He states in today's Gospel, you have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Those words must have sounded incredibly radical to Jesus' audience, and they continue to challenge us today. At the outset, we can feel that the invitation of Jesus is very radical. It goes against the ways of the world and what we are used to. When we are wronged, it can make us angry. It can cause us fear and distress. It can deeply wound us. All of these things make us want to strike back. An eye for an eye, as we heard yesterday, if not more. We all know that it is easy to love those who love us in return. But Jesus calls us to a higher standard, to love even those who oppose us, mistreat us, 
and vicious harm. Although returning harm for harm is the standard of the Old Testament and the standard of worldly governments in dealing with evil and opposing powers, Jesus calls us to his higher way. What does it mean to love our enemies? It means treating them with the compassion and kindness, even when they show us hostility. It means seeking reconciliation instead of revenge and forgiveness instead of resentment. Loving our enemies requires us to see them not as adversaries to be defeated, but as fellow human beings deserving of dignity and respect. And why do we need to love our enemies? Because we, call, we are called to be perfect as our Heavenly Father is perfect. In a world that often operates on the principle of reciprocity, Jesus calls us to break free from this cycle of tit for tat. Instead of responding to hate with the hate and violence with the violence, we are called to respond with love and grace. This is a radical love of Christ, a love that transcends boundaries and transforms our lives. In a practical sense, loving enemies is really hard. We have enough difficulty in loving people who love us. But at the same time, we cannot forget the call for perfection the call to imitate our Heavenly Father, who makes his Son rise on the evil and on the good, since reign on the righteous and on the unrighteous. It is an invitation to journey from incomplete and imperfect love to a complete and perfect love. The world was created out of love, for love and in love. And we, the creatures, are created for the same, to live in love, to show love, and to receive love. Not any ordinary love, but the perfect love, the love of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. As they share their love with each other perfectly and harmoniously, we are challenged to imitate them. The need to love our enemy is to reflect God in ourselves. Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Jesus tells us that God is the standard against which everything is measured. One of my formators used to say, don't look at me, don't compare with me. I am not your model. Jesus is your model. God is our model. The invitation to be perfect as our Heavenly Father is perfect is so appropriate for our times, where we continue to experience war and hatred between nations and communities. If we want to create a new world order where there will be peace and brotherhood, where there will be perfect love, then we need to follow the radical way of Jesus. And that is the only way we are going to create a new world order with the friends, families, communities, and nations. Martin Luther King Jr. was onto something when he, when he said, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do. Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. The perfection that Jesus is talking about here is not about flawlessness or moral superior, superiority. Rather, it is about embodying the perfect love of God, a love that knows no bounds, a love that embraces all, a love that seeks the well-being of even those who oppose us. So, dear brothers and sisters, we are called to create a new world order where we can imitate the perfection of God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. As hard it sounds, this is the only way we can bring about a new world order 
here on earth. Let us go into the world loving and praying for our enemies. Let us bring forth our prayers and petitions. We pray for ourselves, for strength and courage, and the grace of God to fill us, that we may have the power to do what Jesus is inviting us to do. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We particularly pray for families that are broken, for marriages that are shattered because of misunderstandings, because of what they have said or did, that they may continue to experience the goodness of the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those in our daily TV mass prayer intentions, for, their, for them, for their goodness, for their well-being. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May our community prayer this month, with its celebration of the Feast of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, renew and deepen our faith in his love for us. May he guide us as we seek to walk the path of mercy, compassion, and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We take a moment of silence to bring to God our own personal needs and prayers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us make all these prayers through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the wine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. Wash me, let's mess it Pray, dear brothers and sisters, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. O Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him with great goodness you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore, we too extol you with all the angels as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and Holy indeed, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all nations and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. 
Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to the disciples saying, take this, all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to your second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with the Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an ever eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Francis, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you in your compassion, O merciful Father. Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you, at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. With the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that we, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope on the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. 
who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I passionately desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my soul so that I may unite myself wholly to you, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth in peace to love and serve one another. Amen. Thanks be to God. Our thanks to our donor for the gift of this Mass.